All right. OK, well, let's get on to form. So what is form as an element of art? Form is literally like the building block of art. It, and you can think of it like blocks because it's turning something, um, uh, like making something look three dimensional. And, and especially in our drawings, it's good to think about how things fit together and how, <laughs> how you can build on top of, of one another. And so I'm gonna teach you today how to draw through the form. And I know that we've been doing a lot of observational drawing. Um, you can draw something today from your room, from your house, or you can just draw along with me. It's totally up to you. Um, I'm just kind of drawing. I was doing a combination today of drawing from something that um, is in my, my room, like my, the desk that I'm at, and then uh, kind of using my imagination to add things on top. But I'm going to show you what drawing through the form could look like. So I know this is actually really hard to see. I was just talking to Scott before this class. So um, in this drawing, I have, it's just a box. And inside the box are a bunch of random objects. And on the bottom of this is uh, sitting on top of this desk. And now when I say drawing through the form, what I mean is, is that, I don't know if you guys, you can, it's hard to see um, using this, because uh, I was using this pencil, this blue pencil, and, and blue pencils are really helpful. But when you're drawing through the form, what you're really doing is you're drawing the actual 3D form in your drawing first, and then you're erasing the parts that you're not going to be able, you're not going to see. So, for instance, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys how that how that could happen. So, if you want to draw along with me, you can. You're more than welcome to. Um, if you have two different colors, it can be really helpful to do the whatever the lighter color is. Um, as your first layer of colors or first layer of drawing because um, it's it's erasable and it helps you when you're to, to see the forms. Um, I have like a non-photo, it's called non-photo blue erase. It's like an erasable blue pencil that is awesome and it's really, really good for drawing things in. Um, but unfortunately in this, I can't use it right now because you guys can't see it. So I'm gonna set it aside, I'm not gonna use it, but if you happen to have something, a two erasable erasable um, pencils, then you can do that. So tater tot, what we're gonna to do today, no worries. Oh, Armand, all right, nobody. <laughs> all right, so what we're gonna to do today is you guys can follow along with me if you want, or like I said, you can, um, you can draw on your, or you can draw something on your own. Um, just to get a quick warm up in though, just to get, let's like take a few minutes and just start drawing in some really simple forms. So starting maybe with like some cubes. So just just take a few minutes and draw in some some 3D forms. So you draw in some some like you try with some cubes. You could draw in some spheres. You could draw in some cylinders. Forms are all these three dimensional shapes. And when I say drawing through the form, Try to draw, see if you can draw them in like this, where you actually see the, where they're, it's almost like they're invisible or they're uh, see-through, everything's glass. So I'm just gonna draw in a couple of forms just to kind of get warmed up. So there's my cube. Maybe I'll do a rectangular prism, a long, thin rectangular prism. An easier way to draw sometimes forms in is by like starting with one shape and then just layering the other shape on top of it, like this, or behind it, like that, and then connecting, connecting the lines. So here's my long, thin rectangular prism. You can try some cylinders. Cylinders have like an, an ellipsis. An ellipsis is like kind of like an oval shape, two oval shapes, one at the top, one at the bottom, and then Straight lines connecting, connecting. Obviously, to make a cylinder really look like a cylinder, you got to add in some shading, which we're not going to do too much of um, today, only because um, value, and shading and value, shading is value, and we're going to talk about that more next week. So, but just get started. Like, if you want to try a sphere, then you kind of have to add in some shading. So, a sphere is just a ball that 
you've added some contour lines or shading to. Contour lines are just the lines that, um, like this, that kind of give contour or form or shape to your drawing. But if you're going to do a sphere, then you got to add in some, some value to make it really look like a ball or a sphere. So I'm just adding in some value here. This is just a quick warm up to get started. You're just drawing some shapes from your imagination. Um, you could do a cone. If you want to get real fancy in your sketch, you can like, you know, add in the shadow of your of your sphere. You want to get real fancy there. You can do that. Maybe you want to try, um, I don't know, a, a rectangular prism. A rectangular prism would be a triangle. And then have like a triangle behind it like this. this like, actually, this wouldn't be a rectangular prism. What would this shape be? Is this a rectangular prism? I'm forgetting my geometric, uh, my geometry. There's that kind of rectangular prism, but there's also like a, a, yeah, there's a pyramid. So that's different from a pyramid. So that would be a rectangular prism, but a pyramid shape would be a little different. A pyramid shape would be a triangle, and then you'd have a triangle on the side like this, and then you'd have another triangle kind of coming down. I think it's like that. Yeah. Kind of like that, I think. Should it just be? See, I even have to like think about it. That's why it's good to warm up. That's why it's good to practice. I think it would just look like that. Okay. So you have like a pyramid shape. Um, what other shapes can we do? You can do a cone. So a cone also starts with a triangle, but a cone is rounded like a cylinder or a sphere. So you have your cone shape. And the cone shape would have a, an ellipsis at the bottom. So that same, that same bottom that you have for, a, um, for a, a, a cylinder. And then if you're gonna make it really look real, you gotta add a couple of contour lines across like that. All right. Hmm, anybody else? Anybody, can I, anybody wanna show me their warm ups? I'm curious. Curious what kind of uh, shapes you guys warmed up with. Yeah, let's see. Oh, nice. Hold on, Keen. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Scott. Awesome. Oh, good. Awesome. I see a sphere there. I see, uh, I see a rect, I think it was a, a yeah, like an up, like a, uh, was it a, did you do a, um, what do you call a rectangular prism? Rectangular prism. Cool. Awesome. Very nice. Nice job, Keen. All right. So, all right, just as a warm up, this is just a quick warm up to like get our, our, get us started in thinking about form. So like I said, forms really are the building blocks of drawing. So in your form, in these forms um, is when, when we're actually, when we're, when, we're, when we're drawing today, we're gonna be using these forms to really help us draw in um, our pictures. So hold on, let me just get a new shape. This one works okay. So, like I said, if you have something in your in your apartment or in your house or in your room that you're in that you would like to draw, you are welcome to use that um, to help you uh, think about form. But if you want to just draw along with me, then you're more than welcome to. So when I say drawing through the form, well, what I mean is that we're going to be drawing in the entirety of the form, even though in a drawing, sometimes like you only see the front part of something, but we're actually going to draw the part that we can't see. So I'm going to start and we're, this is, this is like the box challenge. So I'm going to start with a, a box. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in a rectangle coming in at an angle a little bit. So I have my rectangle and it's coming at an angle. And then I want it to be a box. So I'm going to draw another rectangle back here that's coming in at the same angle. Like this. So I'm 
drawing this box in kind of a weird way of drawing it, but I've never really drawn it that way. But I'm drawing this box in almost as if um, it was a, a see-through box. So as if it was made out of glass. This box is made out of glass. And I started, I did it a weird way. I don't normally do it that way. So I'm gonna fix it up a little bit. There we go. And that's why we draw in lightly because that way if we make mistakes, we can erase. And I made a mistake with that line. That's okay. There we go. Okay. So here's my see-through box. And I want it to be see-through right now because now inside of this box, I'm going to fit in some objects. So, and I've, I'm gonna use the shape of this box to help me determine what I can fit inside of this. So for instance, um, inside of the box, in my other drawing, I drew in a pineapple. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna start with that. So like right in the middle here, I'm actually gonna draw in, I'm gonna start with like this kind of oval shape because the pineapple is kind of oval shaped, kind of like this. So I'm gonna start with this oval pineapple. Um, the bottom of the pineapple has like an ellipsis shape, kind of like that. It's kind of kind of the bottom of the pineapple, just like this. And then obviously the top of the pineapple has like, you know, the like little frilly bits on the top like this, little leafy bits. So I'm just drawing those in for right now. Okay. So now my pineapple, my, my see-through pineapple is now sitting inside, inside my box. I think I'm going to also put inside of this box, maybe I'll put like a, a roll of paper towels or so, I don't know, a roll of something. So I want to do a cylinder. So I'm going to start with two straight lines kind of coming down and an ellipsis at the bottom, an ellipsis at the top, just like this. There we go. Just like that. So I'm drawing all the parts that um, we normally don't see in a drawing. Because I can't tell you how many times I've looked at like a really nice painting or a really nice picture and I've been like, huh, there's something wrong with that picture. And what's wrong with it is that the artist didn't draw through the form. They just tried to draw the, the like with the part that they could see. So inside this box, um, I'm going to use, I'll use a, I'll just go over it darkly. So inside this box right now, the re in reality, we would not see, if I was going to paint it, we wouldn't see any of that. We wouldn't, this is the part we would see. We would only see the line coming down. We'd only see the part coming up because imagine my, this is like a cardboard box in my drawing. My drawing is a cardboard box. So all of the, the parts that are inside of it, we wouldn't actually see. It would look like that. But by using our, my pencil and by, and by drawing through the form, you're actually giving your drawings more substance. You're drawing by like pretending, pretending that things are see-through and by drawing them in like as, as if they were see-through or, or um, made of glass, your drawings will look more realistic and they'll have more substance and more form to them. Um, also, you're, you're, you'll, it'll help you get into the habit of, of overlapping shapes. And so maybe over here I'll draw in, I had a bottle, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add in that bottle shape that I had over here. So inside this box, I've got like there's an ellipsis down here, and then it's going to kind of come up like that, and then it's going to curve in, and the top part of the bottle is coming up here, and then there's like the little ellipsis on the top, kind of like that. So I'm drawing that in just like that. Okay, maybe it also inside this box I have, hmm, what else could I put inside this box? Maybe this is like a box of my groceries. So I have my pineapple, I have my paper towel, I have like a bottle of fancy sparkling water, and now I also have a box of cereal. So I'm going to add in my box of cereal. So my box of cereal is going to maybe it's going to be maybe it's kind of in between where the bottle is. And I don't like this curve on my bottle. So I'm going to fix that. Yeah. Uh, Nathaniel raised his hand. 
What's up, Nathaniel? So I've been watching videos of isometric video games. How do they actually transform that from like a simple like isometric view to make it 8-bit? To make something look 8-bit? Uh, you know... I think he means something like, for example, Star Fox for the Super Nintendo, something like that. Yeah, so how do you make something look 8-bit? Um, I... I, you know what, you know what, so that might, that might be better, Daniel, I want you to hold on to that question, and I want you to ask that question to Naleen, because I don't work in digital very, very, very much, so I think that Naleen could answer that question for you a little bit better, okay? I think I know. Oh, you, how, how, you, do you? Because I'm not sure. Um, I do. I'm actually, t I'm actually pretty good at text. Yeah? Um... It actually depends on which software you're using first. I would suggest um, pixelart.com with an I. Mm -hmm. And, um... Okay. So, if you're trying to make a 3D square, I just suggest mm -hmm. using two square tools and then just using a line to um, connect them. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I wish I knew some of these things because I just don't. I don't work digitally. I'm I I am an old school uh, art teacher over here, and I do everything um, by hand. <laughs> yeah, Nathaniel. But yeah, search it, and then Nathaniel. I'm not joking. Save that question and see if you can ask. Um, uh, see if you can ask Naleen because I know she she works digitally really frequently. So all right. So I'm drawing in my cereal box over here. So, oh, uh, 8-bit games go through and make multiply easy. Oh, that's cool. Tater tot. I didn't know that. So yeah, that's, uh, those are, those are, that's a really good question. So I'm drawing in my cereal box over here. And I, like I said, this is like, you're drawing through the form. So you're drawing, so here's, here is my, uh, the top part of the cereal box. So when I'm finished with this drawing, most of all of the stuff that's inside of this box right now, we're not going to be able, we're not going to see. Yeah, absolutely. Who would like to share? Yeah, go ahead, Keen. Whoa, nice ice cream cone in a box. That's awesome. Very nice. I like the cone. Oh, that's, that's awesome, actually. Okay, you know what? Um, I love that you had that cone in there. So maybe, maybe, maybe like there's a cone that's wedged in right here. So here. It's I'll... not a, it's not a box, right? I think it's a bag. I don't know. It's not a box? I don't know if it is. Oh, okay. Well, I, I saw the ice cream cone inside of your, inside of that form, whatever that form was. So, so this cone right here is is, is basically being wed is wedged in in between the uh, the, the 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 roll of towel paper towels and the and the pineapple. So all right, now that I've oh you know what I'm going to do also I'm going to give my right now this is a this box is floating in the middle of nowhere, so I'm going to give a table to it. I'm drawing a straight line all the way across cutting through the box, going all the way across. I'm Notice I'm not drawing the line, then jumping over the box and continuing the line. That's normally what you would do if you're drawing. But today, we are drawing through the form. So my line literally went straight through my box. OK? And I'm going to put another line down here. And the reason we're doing that is because it's going to help you get better at, at drawing in forms. So all right, so now that I have that, maybe I maybe I'll, I'll continue out to the desk again that I was at before. So the bottom part of the desk. If I want to get super fancy and I could start adding in some things that are on the outside of this box, um, like maybe over here I have like an orange. Maybe there's an orange. It's a, it's a, so I have a sphere that's like sitting in front of this. So here's my orange shape that's going to be in front, just like that. Maybe um, also on my table, maybe my tape, my desk is apparently really cluttered. So on my desk, maybe I also have a bunch of sheets of paper, maybe. So 
So I could also draw in, um, let's see, I could draw in a bunch of like just random sheets of paper, which would just be rectangular rectangles. So a sheet of paper is so thin that it doesn't actually have much form to it. If you wanted to, if you wanted to make it look like it was super thick, maybe it wasn't a piece of paper. You could give it like a little bit of an of an edge. Maybe it's like a super thin little bot little uh, piece of paper. I don't know. Maybe it's a book. It's like a super thin book. So and then maybe I have like you know another another book or that's like I don't know something over here. I have another sheet of paper or a book that's like coming through here. And, Notice I'm drawing straight through these forms. I'm not, I'm, it doesn't matter that they're like, everything right now is invisible. Everything in my, in my, or not invisible, everything in my, on my desk is, is made of glass. That's what I'm trying to say. So you're pretending that everything is, everything is glass right now. <laughs> There's one more sheet of paper. It's back over here. So I have a very messy desk. There we go. So there's some papers. Maybe, um, what else? What else could I add? Maybe um, over here I have another box. So I'm practicing overlapping shapes and overlapping things. So my box is right here. So so now I have to think about, okay, like if the dimensions of this box. If this box is really gonna fit on this desk, it can't go back too far or it would um, break my, my, it would break this big box that's right here. So I have to think about, okay, well, maybe this box it doesn't go back that far. Maybe it only goes back like maybe that far. Maybe it's like this. It's like in front of this orange, like that. Okay, so there we go. So maybe there's like a box there, like this. So sorry guys, the light changed in my room right now. It got really dim. Um, okay, so maybe then maybe Behind this, maybe I have, uh, I think what else can I add? Maybe there's like a vase, a vase. So there's like a, maybe I have, oh, okay. Maybe it's like a, a round, maybe it's like a round vase. So so it's maybe the bottom of it. We don't really see because it's behind this box, but maybe it comes up like this. It's a round vase. Oh, maybe it's not a vase. Maybe it's a pitcher and maybe it like, has like a little neck. Oh, maybe it's a vase. A little neck comes out like this, and there's like a little ellipsis right here. There's a, my vase. If I want to get fancy, I can add in. This, this vase is sitting on top of this box right here. This. Okay. All right. I could add in. Maybe there's something inside of this vase. Some flowers. Some things that are coming out. freehanding this right now just drawing it quickly so, all right but there we go so now you can see so everything right now is see-through everything in my drawing is see-through the only thing i'm really focusing on is form once you start solidifying things or once once you you're like okay i'm, I'm liking where this drawing is going um then you can start to clean up your lines and start erasing the lines that are behind so like I said before, if you're ever working with a blue pencil, I know it's really, really, really hard to see. I tried, if I zoom in a little bit, you might be able to kind of see. Um, with a, if a blue pencil is really easy to erase. So like I, you, once I erase this blue line, I can't see it at all. <laughs> it is totally gone, this blue line, um, which makes it really easy. So if I erase, it makes it really easy to work with. So if I go through and I can, I can erase that and all of a sudden, like I've turned my box, my box is now really becoming more three dimensional. It's not less, uh, it's less uh, see through, okay? <laughs> by just by giving it an erase, erasing. But you can see how like, it's really interesting, let me zoom back, to start with drawing through the form and then taking away the lines inside. When you're when you have these shapes, these lines that are drawn inside, now when I take them away, I know because I drew them in there, I know that everything fits. 
I don't have anything in this box, even though this is like a really overcrowded box I have here. I know that everything fits because I drew it inside. So I'm going through and I'm actually erasing all the lines now that I really wouldn't see. I would definitely see this front line. So I'm going to solidify that line. I would definitely see this edge. But all of this is hidden now, even though I drew it. I know it's all there. By erasing it and cleaning things up, all of a sudden my objects and my um, and the things that I've drawn are going to look more permanent and they're going to have better form because I, I really spent the time to like make sure that the forms were right. So this can be helpful if you're if you're doing a comic and you like you're not sure how something should fit instead of just drawing like in the top part of something like go through and actually draw in the whole object just draw it in lightly it's meant to be erased afterwards because when you do that then your forms will be better so i wouldn't see that this one is underneath there. I would see that. Oh, wait, actually, maybe I would see. No, see, I have to decide which one's on top. I think this one's going to be on top. So this book is on top of these two pieces of paper. So it would look like this. Okay. And I wouldn't see this line. So this piece of paper is on the top. So I have to order them. This was this on top, then this one, and then the third, this, this last one over here is the one at the very bottom. So it'd be that order. Okay. Just like that. So then you can go through and I can like clean everything up, make everything look a little bit better, make sure that we solidify these lines in. I would love to see whatever you guys um, had. Uh, I'd love to see if you want to share anything that you've drawn. Like I said, you could, could have followed me, followed along with me today, or you, if you kind of did your own thing, that's awesome too. I'd love to see though. This orange kind of squashed in between shape that's squashed in between these two objects. Just like that. This is maybe this vase is made out of glass. So like you can't actually see through it because this, this is this vase is the one thing that, that actually you will be able to see through in this drawing. <laughs> Just like that. So All right. I want to get fancy, I can add in. I had a desk drawer coming out over here. I could do a desk drawer. So I'm going to kind of have it coming out like this. It's coming out straight in front of me. I'm going to draw in the drawer. So the drawer is rectangular prism. So I'm having it come straight out. And it's going back like this. So if, if I was going to really continue drawing this, and this is a little bit different because this drawer is coming forward. Um, the perspective is I'm kind of looking down on it. So the back, as things get farther away from you when drawing, they, they appear smaller. So with this perspective, the drawer that I have would look like this. It's going straight back like that. And it would look like this. So I know I'm not going to see these, these parts of the lines, but it kind of, kind of looks like going back like that. And then in the inside, there's like the edge. So edges, have you, have you ever taken my class before where I show you guys how to draw furniture and stuff? Edges are really, really important in drawings when you're, when you're trying to make things look more realistic. There's just something about 
getting a really clean edge in and some like having a um having a uh, a ruler can really help you with that <laughs> okay, so let me erase parts that aren't you're not going to see just like this so this line this desk line is going to be a really solid line it's going straight across only part we don't see it is where the book is overlapping right here. It's the only place we don't see this really straight hard edge with desk. But this line coming out is really hard. This line coming out is really hard like that. This line is erasable. Let me see that. If I want to draw in the handle of the desk. Maybe I would, maybe I would see inside of this. Maybe like I have it out so far, this desk drawer, that I would see inside a little bit. Um, okay, for the handle, so I'm starting with like a kind of a straight line across, and then it's going to be like a like a half moon shape or like a half semicircle. I start with that, and then I can start to pencil in the handle so it's coming out and getting a little bit narrower at the front and then going a little thicker a little bit just like that and then there's going to be a bottom the dimension like this kind of like that there's that line we have a handle there awesome okay all right, well, here, here, so you guys can see how form can really start to like help you make your drawings look more real because, and drawing through form is pretending like everything is made of glass will help you if you're, especially in when you're overlapping. We did a lot of overlapping of shapes today. So, and drawing through the forms is super helpful and super important when you're, when you're drawing. Um, when you're drawing overlapping shapes. Does anybody want to show? I'm totally curious if anybody would like to share. I'd like to show. Let's see. Whoa, tell me about this. I like these these forms that you have here. What is technically um, just me drawing star box. <laughs> Very cool. Nice. Awesome. I love it. Very cool. Nice job. Nice use uh nice use of the the the, the regular prism shapes. Uh let's see. Oh, thank you, Tater Tot. Yeah, you know, I haven't really been paying attention to these chats, but I noticed there was a lot of chatting going on. Um, and I, I haven't made this announcement in a while, because. but um, in general, I'd like, like to try to keep the only to about stuff that is happening in the class. So I usually, usually try to save it for people who um, have questions for me or who, um, uh, you, like would like to compliment or ask a fellow classmate a question about about project or whatever we're learning. Um, if you have something like the, like a private, if you have something you want to say to just one person, you could always do a private message to that one person. Okay, but yeah, I completely agree, Tater Tot. Thank you for thank you for bringing that to our attention because I I haven't really been following the chat today, so and I'm <laughs> scrolling through it right now and I'm noticing there's a lot of a lot of stuff going on over here. So um form is difficult to master so like i said this is this is something that takes a lot of practice and i know that i threw a lot at you guys today um and it but it's good practice it's really really good practice especially if you want to be uh an animator especially if you want to you want to like make your drawings uh like if you want to be a cartoonist or an animator because these kinds of things are what uh, an animator needs. An animator needs to know how something is going to fit. Another, otherwise, your pictures are going to look all out of proportion, and they're going to, and they're going to, they're going to look. Things are going to look off. 
So by, by practicing drawing through the form today, yeah, I'm not sure about that. Evie. So um, by practicing drawing through the form, you can, you can make your pictures and drawings look more realistic. All right. We, uh, uh, Safe would like to share. Yes, I would love to see. Hi. So, um, it doesn't really have to do with the class, but I just decided to share it anyways. Okay. Here's a little project I've been working on. Yeah. It's kind of like a video game thing. Um, I'm thinking of making it on um this coding thing called Scratch. But I thought it was too advanced, and I will get this new coding. It's called like Block Souls or something, and I'll. I'm going to make a game. Uh-huh. Oh, that's so cool. And what is the thing you think is a Minecraft slime? What is the thing that I think is a, is a, what do I think is a Internet Minecraft slime? Someone asked, is that a Minecraft slime? Oh, no. Oh, it does no. not have to do anything with Minecraft. This is a character I call Blocko. I made a scratch game about him, but it's way more different. Aww. So there's this owl that lives in trees. This is just a short level idea. Well, he's really cute. And you know what? You, the, the, what we're practicing today, you could totally do with these little characters. So the way that you've drawn these little characters, they look very, they look very flat. What if like you had each of these little, your little characters with like a little cube. So like when you're drawing them, you could literally give them form even if they might not have form, but you, you could. You could practice giving them, like, making them into it's little... It's a 2D game, not a 3D game. It is? Okay. Yeah. It still would be cool, though, to practice. Practice making them into, like, little little cubes. Like, what if, what if they really did come to life? Like, wouldn't that be kind of cool? I don't know. It's just good practice. Everything we do here, and I think I said this every single week, is to kind of throw you guys out of your comfort zone because you don't grow by drawing the same things over and over again. So I'm hoping that by giving you guys challenges and doing things that maybe you wouldn't do on your own, um, it can help you improve and grow as an artist. So, and you can take that with what you will. If you wanna, you, wanna, you feel like uh, challenging yourself today, you can, you, can, you can try drawing forms or if you're just, you're happy drawing the things that you're, that you're comfortable drawing with, you can do that too. But it's just good practice. It's really good practice to try something that you might not be familiar or comfortable with. So form and forms are challenging. Drawing forms is, is not something that is super easy and it takes a lot of practice. Like what was, there's a, there's a line about like what, what really makes an artist and an artist isn't somebody who, who just like, I, I think there's, in, in, a, in the world, there's this idea that an artist is just somebody who has this like light bulb idea and comes out with this beautiful finished piece of art. But in reality, an artist is just somebody who works a little bit at something every single day. And um, you, <laughs> you guys are all artists because you guys come here every day and you, 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 you work at it and you like are trying things that are new. And you should be really, really proud of yourself for that because it's not easy to try something that's new. Um, so I hope, I hope you guys learned something today, a little, a little, some, something about form. I'll go back to my, my drawings down here. <laughs> I hope, I hope this helped you a little bit when you're thinking about making, making your drawings. Uh, Tater would like to share. I'd love to see Tater. So I got a little confused. So I pretty much did the wireframe instead. Oh, that's cool. No worries. That's awesome. That's, and you know what? The wireframe is, is great for drawing characters. Is that what you did with Ben yesterday? Uh, I don't think we did wireframe yesterday. We did just poses in general. And I also want to thank you again for putting up with the chat because that is a lot. So I do appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> no worries. All right. Well, thank, thank you. Thanks, Tudor, for, uh, for chiming in. It was uh, thoughtful of you to chime in. Okay. Um, all right. Well, don't worry if today was like a little bit strange or hard. Like, like I said, it's, it's all about challenging yourself. It's all about um, trying your best to, to try something new. So we've been going every single week has been a different element of art. 
this week was form. Um, next week is, let's see. I think next week is space. space. Space, yes, that's always a really good one. So next week is actually tied, this week is really tied to next week because we're it, when we're drawing using forms like this, space is this like it's kind of it's very very similar to what we're doing today so space is left and then i think there's one more value value is the last one so awesome um but yeah all right uh is there anybody else who would like to share otherwise we might finish a little early today Kat would like to share i'd love to see cat um so this is what i have it's really sketchy um, oh, nice! Cat. I used to draw 3D shapes a lot, but um, don't anymore. Um, at least like this, I draw 3D, but I don't necessarily draw the basic 3D shapes. Mhm. Mm That's so, okay. You did an awesome job. Oh my gosh, I really see you working really, really hard on these forms. Like I, I see some really good work here. Like I see Kat, I see you stepping out of your comfort zone and trying something totally new and drawing these forms in inside in like in this is awesome. I'm glad that you were followed that you followed along today. Like I said, this is real good practice, really, really good practice. And it's always just good to go back even to drawing in um, your forms this way. So practicing drawing in your just your your simple 3D 3D forms is just it's really good practice. How many full sketchbooks does everyone have, Lily Heathers? I know that's a good question. I have lots and lots and lots. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. That's a lot. That's an awful lot. Like. Yeah, being an artist is not that's amazing. Being an artist is 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 working hard just a little, little bit every day. All right, putting in the work. All right, is there anybody else who would like to share? If not, you're um, you're welcome to like just chill and draw. I saw I saw your comment, um, Tater, about like just staying over and, and drawing. You're welcome to like continue drawing. It, you're welcome to like share something that might not be part of part of what we did today. I am I love to see you guys' art, no matter if it is something that you have drawn today or a year ago. Like if there's something you want to share, I'd love to see it. Um, I see a hand up. He, yeah, what's up? It's the thing I just made for no reason. Let's. What is it? Tell us. It's a giant hand getting grabbed by a tentacle and a bird. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> it's a giant hand getting grabbed by a tentacle and a and a bird. Is it like, is it in water? Where is this hand? It's ocean. It's inside the ocean. It here with the wavy line. Oh, you should, you should draw in the, draw in the ocean line and the waves coming up. And maybe, maybe you could draw in some more of what's underneath like underneath the water. That'd be cool. You should keep working at it. Add more. <laughs> Did anybody who was um, in my class last week give any more um, thought to, last week we, we were talking about surrealism and we, we were t thinking about um, a dinner party, a surreal dinner party and how, like wh what would be the most surreal type of dinner party that you could go to? <laughs> oh, Laura, did you wanna share? Or who is that? Who is Laura? That's not Laura. That's um. Was it Cat? Was that Cat? No. Somebody wanted to share. Laura said she would share in a minute. Oh, okay, cool. Sure, no worries. Yeah. So I remember we had some really cool ideas about uh, a dinner, hosting a dinner party. Somebody, I think Scott said, host it on the ceiling. <laughs> my, I think my idea was hosting it in the bottom of a swimming pool. You'd have to like, uh, you'd have to wear scuba gear to go to your dinner party. <laughs> Did anybody, because I, I left that class, guys, feeling like I, I kept thinking about that project, or I kept thinking about that idea. <laughs> I even told my, my husband about it. I was like, this is like a really funny thing that we were talking about today. 
he, he laughed. He thought it was a very a funny uh, idea. The surreal dinner parties. Hmm. I'm feeling like, what else can I add to this drawing? I think maybe do something over here. Just don't know what. If anybody has any suggestions on things that things to add, write them in, write them in or shout them out. Okay, I'll add something else. Dinner party in the undead world. Ooh, that would be creepy. It sounds very Halloween-like. A graveyard dinner party. That'd be really spooky. That'd be really, really spooky. <laughs> or I could just eat. Yeah. Well, we, we decided you weren't here last week, Keen, but we, we were talking about how uh, it would be like the point of a, of a very surreal dinner party wouldn't be necessarily um, to eat the food. Like you might you might leave a, a surreal dinner party feeling very hungry because you weren't able to eat anything. In fact, if if you came to my party and uh, it was at the bottom of a pool, I don't think you'd be able to eat anything. <laughs> So, but, but the point is, is that it would be a dinner party that you would never forget. All right, let's see, what else could I add back here? <laughs> I think maybe there's like a, I don't know, maybe there's like a spool or something back here. Maybe there's like a, I'll draw like a cylinder on its side. Maybe it's like a a a, a roll, like a um, yeah. What's it called? Like a poster roll, or how you if you have like posters or piece of paper, you want to keep safe. So it would be like it would be coming behind this box. It'd be like back over here. So remember, we're drawing it as if as as if it were see through. Even though I'm gonna go back in and erase. So there's the the roll. Maybe there's, what else could I draw in here? Maybe there's like one more. Oh, I know, I could draw like a, a teapot. Maybe there's like a teapot over here and a mug. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll do a teapot and a mug. So here- Chris says teapot. she's ready to share. Oh, I'd love to see. Okay, so I drew a character that Evie gave me. I don't have a name for it yet, but yeah. Oh. Oh, I like it. It liked, uh, what kind of animals were you basing it on when you were drawing it? Were you thinking of like deer or um, like with the little, or cat? Like what, what kind of animals were you thinking of? Like a fox? Um, I got this from Evie. I'm not really sure what she was thinking of, but I kind of feel like kind of dog. Okay. That's funny because I actually I think it looks very much like I was gonna say that it looks it looks like Evie's drawings. It looks like uh, inspired by her. I love that. I love that you guys are inspiring one another. That's awesome. Oh, well, thanks Evie for having such a, a good uh, like influence and nice job, Laura. I like that drawing. I like that you guys are influencing each other. That's what artists do, man. They they influence one another. Chris Keen. Hi, Keen. What's up? Tell us about it. Oh, you add it. What did you add? Oh, yeah. I made a that the hand behind the submarine. This is a Kraken. <laughs> and already destroyed the rest of the mess. Okay. The arm has some kind of jet propulsion thing. Okay. Very cool. Very, very cool. Nice adding. I love it. I love when people add, when you add on to your drawings. Like, like what I'm doing now is I'm just like, I'm not done. I'm going to add in, I have like a picture over here. And I'm going to add in um, like a mug right here. I love when you add to things. I say this all the time, but I, th I think it's really, really hard to overdo a drawing. It's so much easier to like unfinish a drawing, to like to have something that, that it's, that's, that totally is like 
not um, finished. It's much, much, much harder to have a, a drawing that you have overworked. Overworked is the word I'm looking for. It's, much, it's really hard to overwork a drawing. And drawing through um, the form can help you really fix a lot of problems in your drawings because like you'll know, like if when I was drawing that picture, I knew like, all right, well, I'm not gonna have room to draw this handle and it's gonna go off the page because I knew that the form was gonna be too big. So in fact, I can add in, this is like the level of the water that's in here. The liquid that's inside of here. The liquid is clear. Maybe I would see the line. If this is water, then maybe I would see like a kind of a faint hint of like where the desk is behind. But if it's like a any kind of liquid that has a color to it, then I wouldn't see. Um, I wouldn't see through. Or if the if maybe if the picture is like ceramic and in solid, I wouldn't see through. But if it's glass, then I would I would see through the other side. So think about what kind of substance or material it is that you're drawing in. Okay. Well, there's my mug. I added in. Solidify these lines. All right. Well, there is five minutes left. Is there anybody else um, who would like to share? Let me erase this. No. Behind the books, and when you erase this, yeah. yeah. Um, so here's um, one of my characters that I'm just drawing real quick. I've just done this in the past few minutes, so mm. it's nowhere near finished. But um, this is what I have so far, and this is the character. Oh, nice. The color really adds something to that, it's super cute. It's also, it also looks like it's based on Evie. Evie, I think you've inspired a whole generation of artists over here who are just <laughs> into, into your cat designs. Um, this is, um, it's a kangaroo character that I drew. Okay. Um, oh, he's a kangaroo. Oh, okay, I see. Sorry, I thought it, kind of like it definitely it definitely has bigger ears than a regular your regular typical cat for sure <laughs> so it, yeah yeah that's cool very nice awesome well, thank you for sharing you're welcome oh really evie i didn't know that that's awesome so i love that you guys are all inspired by one another or like i, I know i said it before but artists like learn from one another and even like the, the most famous artists like the like the fine artists like Gauguin and like Monet and Picasso they were all like friends with each other because and they all they all like kind of would talk to each other and kind of commune around like and would uh end up um like building off of one another <laughs> yep Oh, thank you, Scott. So I forgot to mention at the beginning of the class, but this is a donation based um, class. So if you enjoy learning um, all and doing projects like this and drawing with us, then you can always donate to the center. Scott just put the link in and that's where you can go to donate and, and anything is welcome. Uh, whatever you whatever you have to give is more than uh, we appreciate. It helps keep our doors open for more classes like this. Um, Scott, maybe you know the exact number, but since last March, we have done, as you say, over 200 classes. Uh, we're, we're almost to 200. So uh, <laughs> next Monday, or this, this coming Monday will be 200 classes. Oh my gosh. So we have been putting, we've been doing this now for a while and, and we hope you enjoy it. We hope you guys are, uh, are having fun and they're learning or learning something. Um, and if you want to support us, you can always donate. Um, we really welcome that because it helps keep our doors open. And I hope you guys learned something about form today. Uh, and 
Oh, go ahead. Sorry, real quick. Uh, Safe, Safe would like to share. I just wanted to make sure he got a chance. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Let's see. I only did a quick update. I just need. This. Ooh, nice. That's awesome. Very I cool. also added some other things here, but nothing important. Nothing important. <laughs> oh. Okay, well, I, I love this game idea. I hope you continue working on this. I also, by, by the way, like those birds, the bird drawings in your background. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, they're, they're owls. owls. I, I, I call them flow to owls. Those are cool. Uh, I see Tater has, yeah. What's up, Tater? Let's see. Liliana and Heather Rose challenged me to make an outfit for the undead surrealist party, so here we go. <laughs> because I love him and can't get enough of him. That's awesome. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> a graveyard dinner party. <laughs> I yeah. love it. I like that. Yeah, you were all about like the, the super fancy, like everything has tails. <laughs> yes. Dapper it's, is my way to go. I just, it should be. I mean, it's a dinner party. You want to dress up for the occasion. <laughs> awesome. Um, all right. Yes, I see one more person wants to share. I'd love to see. Is that Keen? I can't, I'm not sure. I kind of have an idea for which person wanted, which person was making a game. Um, who is that is making a game? I think it's, it's, it's somebody who's called A Nobody. <laughs> okay, so I kind of made this idea of a power up that you could use to drown, of course. Oh. Cool. That's a good, thanks for sharing your idea. Awesome. Thanks, Keith. I might, I might do something like that. I'll do yeah. a sketch and I, and I might share tomorrow. Cool. Got it. Awesome. All right. Well, I hope you guys learned something today and, and um, practice drawing in forms, even if it's just, I always say draw the things that are around you, even if it's just, you know, you're sitting at your table and you're like, oh, I have a, I have an eraser here. I have a pencil here. I'm going to sketch those in. Like, try sketching in your hand. Like, it, it's always good practice just to draw the things that are around you and to try using those forms. All right, guys, I hope you had fun today. And uh, hopefully I'll see you guys all next week for uh, space. And when I say space, it's not outer space. <laughs> all right. Okay, guys. All right. Um, bye, everyone. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Thanks Lee. Bye. Thanks, bye. Bye, guys. Have a great rest of your bye. day. Bye. Bye.